Hello everyone, this is Matt with the Simplistic Reviews Podcast. You've heard myself, you've heard Justin, you've heard DJ, all on the podcast. Try to do a little something different, uh, a little bit of a new concept here right now. Um, video series, of course, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, this is going to be called Simplistic Takes. Uh, everybody these days, they have their hot take, this take, that take, this movie sucks, this movie rules. Uh, if you don't agree with my opinion, you suck too. Uh, didn't mean for that to rhyme, but that's just the way this came about right now. Or at least that rhyme came out. So, for this inaugural episode of Simplistic Takes, uh, if you listen to the podcast, you know I really don't watch a lot of TV. I'm usually the person who's like, yeah, I started that show and never really finished it. It's just kind of my, become my persona uh, during the um simplistic you know, TV uh, take uh, or segment of the podcast. But this time around, I actually did finish the show pretty quickly at that too. It is the new superhero action drama, whatever you want to call it, a dark comedy, uh, if you will, on Amazon called The Boys from the uh, pages of the com- actual comic book written by Garth Ennis. Um, I like Garth Ennis. I like Preacher. Uh, even though I don't watch a TV show, funny enough. I um, also like his take when he uh, worked on uh, Punisher Max. Um, everybody from that kind of era of um, European sensibilities with comics, I put that with uh, Grant Morrison, of course, Garth Ennis. Um, also put that with uh, um, Alan Moore, of course. Um, who else would you include in that kind of segment of... Uh, uh, was a Mark Millar did a kick ass all these very dark takes on uh, the superheroes we know and love, especially stuff in kick ass or even you know uh, Alan Moore doing the killing joke, a very dark story of uh, Batman Moore. Um, I always found these guys doing their takes on the comics to be a lot more entertaining, it's a lot bloodier, a lot more violent, a lot more realistic. Yeah. And The Boys is no different. Uh, I haven't read the comic run. I know it's over now, so of course I can go back and watch the entire thing. But figured, um, I don't like reading that much, so figured this is great. We have a new show on Amazon. It's dealing with superhero type things, and it's essentially shitting all over a lot of the DC type uh, aspects of, of, uh, of superheroes. So basic premise of The Boys in this show, you have guy named Huey, regular dude, he, um, I am going to spoil things, so spoiler alert coming up right now, we'll even stop for a second to make sure you know there are spoilers uh, coming back in, so, okay, so that's your warning for spoilers, so I'm just going to talk about the show in, in generalities, but also maybe spoil a few things, so he was a regular guy, he works basically at kind of a circuit city type scenario and he's put upon guy he doesn't really fight back he's got a reasonably overbearing dad and his girlfriend they want to move on with their life and she is killed by a um, what they like to call them as soups in this um, in this in this fictitious New York um, world or it is New York but it's you know alternate take on New York so you have this uh, company called uh, Vought and Vought is the purveyor of superheroes and everything superhero-esque. It's kind of thinking of Marvel um, as it is right now in a lot of ways. It's a giant. They, they pretty much just turned superheroes into a commodity at this point, which is hilarious at the same time. And you have this group of mainly, mainly superheroes, all superheroes in this group called The Seven, and they're all takes on Superman, on Wonder Woman, on Aquaman, on, you could probably say, Batman to a certain degree. Uh, the Flash, you know, but they all have their own personal demons and problems, and uh, they've become so popular, so rich, so influential in the world that they have just turned into giant flaming dickheads. Um, and the whole story revolves around Huey joining this group of ex CIA operatives led by Carl Urban, who plays Billy Butcher, which is older, something. Like Superhero name as it is, it's alliterative. It sounds like a, it sounds like a superhero uh, alternate identity. Uh, who knows? Season two. I haven't read the book, so I don't know. Maybe he is a superhero. I don't really know. Because 
throwing conjecture out there now, but it's super violent, very sexual. Uh, I would say in the pat in the first 15, 20 minutes, you have what is implied as one of the new uh, superheroes um, in joining Vought at the Senate basically gives the guy who's playing an Aquaman rip off a blowjob, which is, you know, that's what you're in for in this show. Uh, you also get to witness a superhero sex club. Um, and yeah, it's, it, the, the show is a lot of fun. Um, great performances by everybody. I have Jay Quaid. Jay Quaid, you might remember from things like Hunger Games. Uh, Carl Urban, of course, you know, is Bones in the newer Star Trek films, or even Dread, you know, this is, you know, he seems to really dig the comic book stuff, the darker comic book type stories, so Dread and now this, he's working on Carl Urban. Um, a lot of other great characters in this show. You have Elizabeth Shue, and no, she's still looking pretty sexy, too. She's, you know, getting up in age, but she is playing the... Uh, Kind of the, the VP of Vought Corporation, very calculating um, woman in the show, but she plays it up quite well. And eight episodes moves pretty quick. Uh, every episode is roughly an hour or two, so you, they're not really uh, ripping you off in any uh, time in these shows as well. You're getting nearly a full hour every episode, which is really nice. Um, takes some interesting twists, interesting turns, really shows some really ugliness in it as well, which might come off as shocking to some people, but if you're familiar with Garth Ennis, you shouldn't really be shocked that this show is, um, has some really fucked up things going on in it, so, uh, Veer Be Warm, this is definitely an M, you know, TVMA show in a lot of ways, um, you know, showrunners on this, of course, you know, Seth Rogen and Adam Goldberger involved, that just as they were involved in Ennis's other show on AMC, on in Preacher, and, Overall, it's, it's a good show. Pretty uneven in some points, but this could that also could be mainly because of where the show's going and hopefully future seasons. I haven't uh, up to this point. I don't know if they're picked up for uh, season two yet, but I'm, I'm sure they have. I'm sure they will. I can't see Amazon uh, cut bait on the show, uh, even though they've had, from what I've read, some issue, some creative differences in, in some of the things they really wanted to include in the show, which included. Uh, uh, the Superman type character Homelander basically coming all over New York and I would have loved to have seen that uh, but I guess you have to draw a line somewhere so that's what they draw uh, you can't come over the city that never sleeps you can't come over the Big Apple so oh well you know maybe I'm, they didn't shoot it or anything so I'm sure it won't pop up on a, a deleted scene or anything either at any point but who knows maybe they did it secretly they'll have a computer image of it or something but um, overall, good performances by everybody. It should be a fun show to continue watching as seasons progress. Uh, the season definitely ends on a pretty fun little cliffhanger that isn't all that shocking if you know just how superhero shows work or just how episodic TV works in a lot of ways or how comic, book or comic books work in a lot of ways too. But uh, The Boys, a lot of fun quick eight episodes, everybody involved is really, really, you know, they're, they're making a good effort. And if you think people in Marvel make good efforts in their shows or their, their movies, um, you should think the same thing about this. It's, it's just a dark, it's a dark take on, on superheroes and just our love affair with comic book films and comic books in general, just comic book culture. Um, it's very fun and fucked up, which is right up my alley. And didn't know if I would get into the show, but I definitely would like to see where they end up um, taking the show in future seasons without reading the comic books. I don't really feel like spoiling myself at this point. I'll just keep uh, keep on watching episodically as the show progresses. So, well, that's it. That's uh, my short, short and long winded at the same time uh, take on the boys uh, now streaming on. Amazon Prime Video, and that's about it. So, more episodes of this to come. Who knows what I'll talk about, or DJ, or Justin, or all three of us at the same time might talk about in another video like this, just discussing something we're all watching at the same time. So, thank you for joining the first episode of Simplistic Takes. There will be more takes coming soon, 
And of course, if you want to follow anything else that we're doing with the website or on social media, you can follow us on Twitter, you can follow us on Instagram. You can go over to Letterbox. Um, personally, I just updated an entire list of all of our audio commentaries. I believe there's about 45 in total right now. So that's really awesome that you can just go go to Letterbox, look for right, just look for simplistic reviews or look for SR for president because um, you know we are running for president in 2020. In case you haven't heard, we weren't we weren't invited to the debates or anything like that, but. You know, we were we were we were there. You just didn't really just see us. Um, we were there as uh, one of the guys who won't make it to the next debate. That's fine. You know, we're we're still gonna you know um, we're gonna give it the old the old college try for the uh, presidency because you know the guy we have in office now can make it. <laughs> you know what, what's so bad about you know me, Justin, and DJ V president? You know, never there's never been a three way presidency, so I think it's. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, we got to try new things and other people should be elected. I mean, what's better than a Jew and Italian and a black guy? So, there you go. I digress. So, yeah, go to Letterboxd, check out that list. Uh, like I said, we're all over social media. Download the podcast on iTunes, uh, Stitcher. You can stream it over on Spotify as well, too. Um, and, of course, just go to simplisticreviews.net for everything under the sun. Uh, we got it all. We got written reviews. We got podcasts. We have commentaries. We have the whole kick caboodle. Um, and of course, check out more of these view, um, more of these reviews and uh, other fun stuff we got going on on uh, YouTube as well. So, that being said, this is Matt from Simplistic Reviews signing off, and hope to see you again for another simplistic 